Hi, boys and girls. So for this video, I thought what we could do is just talk about the distributive property. We've spent the whole week learning about this incredibly helpful property. The distributive property, what does it teach us? It teaches us that anytime we get a difficult multiplication fact, we can break, break, break it apart into two smaller facts. Now, what we've done this week, it was we've really thought about that in terms of using an array. So my first problem, here's a problem here. Let's do an example together. Four times three. Now, in third grade so far, we've really mastered our zeros facts, our ones and our twos. We're working on our threes, but fours are, are still kind of tricky for us. So we might say to ourselves, four times three, that's too tricky. Let me break, break, break it down into two smaller facts. Now you want to ask yourself, is it more reasonable to break apart the four, the number of rows, or to break apart the three, the number of columns? I kind of want to break apart the four into two smaller numbers. So I could take that four and I could think of it more as two plus two. And I could take my array and, and say, instead of having four rows of three, I could break it in half and I could have two rows of three plus two rows of three. Now I love this problem because I know how to multiply by two. When you multiply by two, you just double the other number. What's three plus three? Six, and same goes down here. So four groups of three is the same thing as two groups of three plus two groups of three. And now when we write the equation, you've got to write the whole thing back out again. So watch this. Four rows of three is equal to, now remember, you've got to keep your two new equations totally separate. Two groups of three plus two groups of three. And we said that two times three was six and that two times three was six. So that means that four times three must be 12. If you get a difficult problem, don't panic break it apart into two smaller problems that you know how to work with. Let's do another example. I'm going to clear my board. Let's see. Put these to the side. Clear my board. Let's say we're working with the problem. Hmm. Let's say six times five. I love the number five and I love multiplying by the number five because, hey, Skip counting by five is easy peasy. We know how to do that since like the first grade. Multiplying by six, that's another story. So I might want to break apart my six. And I might want to say, you know what? I want to have my six be five plus one. I don't want to use six. I want to use five and one. I like multiplying by one because, hello, identity property. And five, again, we like skip counting by five. One number stays the same. Five groups of five plus one group of five is the same thing as six groups of five. So let's look at that now. Five times five, skip count by five, five times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. One group of five, five. Five's looking in a mirror, sees its own reflection. 25 plus five, well that's 30. So six times five must be 30. Let's do another one. One more, this is gonna be our last example. And then I'm gonna have you use a jam board to show me how much you've learned. So here's my next example. It doesn't always have to be the first number that gets broken up. It could be the second number. So let's look here. How about we do three times seven? In this case, I'm going to work with the three. I don't love it, but I'm going to work with it. The seven, I've really got to break apart that seven. I don't feel confident to work with that seven. So instead, I'm going to break it down into, how about five and two? Because two, you just double, and five, you can skip count. Now bring the other number down, three times five and three times two. Now you want to stop and re-say it. Three rows of seven is three rows of five plus three rows of two. Or three groups of seven is three groups of five plus three groups of two. Now you can just solve your two smaller equations and add them back together to get the big one. Three times five, five, 10, 15. Three times two is six, you just double. So that must mean that three times seven 
is 21. You've got to add them back together, right? And you group the one, 21. Okay, now boys and girls, I've done three examples with you. When you get a difficult equation, don't stress. Use the distributive property to break, break, break it apart into two smaller equations and then add them back together. Now I want you to go back into Google Classroom and try this on your own.